This course provides an introduction to the basic principles and uses of the compound light microscope. Students will be given a very brief history of the microscope, a complete overview of the compound microscope with emphasis on understanding the major components and the functions of each, instructions to properly align the microscope, basic micrometry, and elementary care, including cleaning and simple repairs. The history of the microscope in many scientific disciplines began during the Enlightenment. Europeans began to have faith that reason and experience should govern their lives rather than simple tradition. This type of philosophy led to great changes in a period of intellectual growth. Knowledge began to depend upon evidence and reason. Arbitrary authority began to give way to a new human perspective. Knowledge would increase, and with this increased knowledge, a scientific revolution began. This revolution would effectively change Western thinking itself. This new revolution, with its different views and emphasis on observation of the natural realm, was reliant upon man's ability to see his world in a different light. Science, the intellectual and practical activity encompassing the systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experimentation. People began to doubt the veracity of traditional explanations and look for empirical and physical verification of natural phenomena. Science as a discipline was established. The scientific method formalized the thought processes that led to new discoveries and provided a framework for assuring that new ideas could be supported by evidence grounded in the mechanical or physical world rather than the mystical or godly realm. Separate scientific disciplines were developed to help explain natural phenomena in a manner that was sensible and understandable. Chemistry, crystallography, embryology, entomology, geology, physics. The view of the world changed from the mystical to the mechanical. With new experiments, a word derived from experience, came the need for new tools, and soon scientists had the thermometer for accurate measurement of temperature, phase changes, and enthalpy. The barometer, the ability to predict the changing weather and plan accordingly. The microscope, for observation of the minute specimens and organisms that surround us. The telescope, for observation of the heavens and distant objects, and the pendulum clock for accurate measurement of time and calculating travel. When asked which sense, if any, is most important, a majority of people will respond, vision. Our process of learning and discovery is so closely associated with vision that without it, many are lost. Our language associates understanding with seeing something clearly, and when someone wants to study something, they yearn for a closer look. In both the literal and figurative sense, I see you is full of meaning. It is arguable that most scientific endeavors are dependent upon our sense of vision more than any other sense. By definition, science requires observation of natural phenomenon in some way, shape, or form. There are many things that fall outside the range of the human eye, and without instruments to see those objects, our understanding of the natural world would be stuck in the Middle Ages. Only when you clearly see a thing can you understand it. And when you understand something, you see it more clearly. No one knows who the first person to discover the magnifying properties of a curved surface was. It was very possibly a Neanderthal's chance encounter with a drop hanging from a leaf. Transparent liquids and solids have the ability to refract light waves and alter the images of objects observed through it. This fortuitous event probably led to manufactured devices to perform the same function. The lens to the right was made by bending a paperclip into a circle and adding a drop of liquid. The invention of the microscope is based on a simple idea. Light waves passing through a clear substance with convex surfaces are bent, enlarging the image of the object being viewed through it. The physics of magnification are virtually the same for a magnifying glass, stereo microscope, compound microscope, or an electron microscope. Light that has passed through an object, or bounced off the object, is collected by a series of lenses and focused into a real image. The addition of more lenses improves the image quality. In 1625, a member of the Academy of Lynxes, the lynx was chosen because of its keen vision, coined the term microscope to describe the perspicillum. 
Protozoa in a drop of pond water amazed and perhaps terrified the early microscopists. Seeing abundant life where there was thought to be none had to be eye-opening. Robert Hooke used a mounted barrel-type microscope similar to this one. The globe on the right is known as a schuster -Kugel and was filled with water, performing the function of the modern-day condenser. Perhaps one of Hooke's most famous drawings is that of a thin section of cork cambrium. Using the term cell to describe the many small compartments that reminded him of the rooms that monks slept in, Hooke coined the term cell and perhaps gave rise to the science of cytology. Robert Hooke's Micrographia is a historically significant book for both the message and the illustrations. The first major publication of the Royal Society, published in January 1665, it became the first scientific bestseller, inspiring a wide public interest in the new science of microscopy. Describing his observations using various lenses, Micrographia is notable for being the first book to illustrate crystals, insects, plants, and other particles as seen through the microscope. Anton von Leeuwenhoek, who was using microscopes to verify the thread count of the fabrics in his drapery, became interested in the natural world around him, and his skill at grinding lenses quickly propelled him to the forefront of microscopical discoveries. The description of the Vorticella was so accurate that students of the 21st century, with no knowledge of the organism, given his description written in the middle of the 17th century, produce a drawing that can easily be identified as the same organism. Over the next 200 years, as new discoveries in optics, metallurgy, and machining techniques were made, the microscope evolved into a functional and oftentimes beautiful instrument. As physicists discovered new principles and acquired a greater understanding of the properties of light, the uses and applications of the microscope have resulted in the development of alternative ways of observing samples. For example, bright field, dark field, polarized light microscopy, phase contrast. Modern microscopes are very versatile and much easier to use than their predecessors. The modern microscope has as many different forms as it has uses. Most high school students have spent some time marveling at the letter E and mistaking air bubbles for amoeba with an inexpensive student model. That same student, a few years later, may be using a $50,000 microscope to observe the melting point of a material destined to become an integral component of solar cells. Improved manufacturing techniques have made the microscope an affordable and valuable tool in many industrial and scientific endeavors. In an attempt to see even smaller specimens with greater resolution, scientists have moved beyond visible light microscopy. The development of the electron microscope and all of its variations have had a profound effect on our understanding of the world around us. In this series of learning modules on basic microscopy, the viewers are introduced to the basic principles of the microscope and how to use it properly. Each short lesson covers a different component of the microscope, beginning with an overview of the history and then moving on to lessons that describe the parts of the modern microscope and its use. We begin at the light source and follow the light through the microscope until it emerges from the ocular lens. Visit our website for information on these lessons and more.